Tonight, breaking news as we come on the air in the West. The deadly storm mudslides in California and the reports coming in right now of an avalanche in Nevada, northwest of Las Vegas. The images as we come on tonight. Also breaking from London, King Charles has cancer, suspending his public duties. Just days after King Charles was released from the hospital for treatment of an enlarged prostate, the royal family tonight revealing King Charles has now been diagnosed with an undisclosed form of cancer. News tonight, Prince Harry will go home from the U.S. What we know at this hour, Maggie Rooley, live in London. Here in the U.S., that deadly storm, the scope of this growing tonight. The breaking news from Nevada, word of that avalanche. And in California, life-threatening flash flooding, torrential rains and mudslides, dangerous driving cars hydroplaning off highways, wind gusts up to 100 miles per hour. Ginger Z and Rob Marciano both in the storm zone tonight. The major news from the Senate tonight for the first time in years, Republicans and Democrats coming up with a bipartisan plan to address the border. And the news late today, the conservative leaning Border Patrol Union, the officers who patrol the border, endorsing the plan. But tonight, the House Speaker signaling Republicans in the House are not interested amid pressure from Donald Trump not to go along with any deal. Rachel Scott live on the Hill. The breaking news in the case of the Michigan mother charged in her son's deadly school shooting. Tonight, her fate now in the hands of the jury. And the two questions late today, the jurors have now asked the judge. Tonight, news coming in on the U.S. strikes, the retaliation against Iran-backed militants. What's still to come? And Mary Bruce has new reporting. Tonight, we remember one of the heroes of 9-11, the New York City firefighter who stood there with President Bush. And the extraordinary moments, country music star Luke Combs and the song he loved as a boy and his surprise performance with Tracy Chapman, who of course wrote it. You got a fast car. I wanna take it to anywhere. Tracy Chapman's surprise return to the stage. Joni Mitchell at 80, her first performance at the Grammys ever. Celine Dion's surprise appearance, helping Taylor Swift make history. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It is great to start another week with all of you at home. We do begin tonight with that troubling news from London. Buckingham Palace tonight reporting King Charles has cancer less than 18 months into his reign. The palace is not saying what type of cancer or what stage, except to say that it is not prostate cancer. The 75-year-old monarch released from the hospital one week ago today after treatment for an enlarged prostate. It was during that hospital stay the unrelated cancer was found. Tonight we have learned that King Charles has personally called his sons, William and Harry, to share with them the news. ABC News tonight confirming Prince Harry will be going home to the UK to be with his father. Tonight, President Biden just a short time ago reacting to the news and ABC's Maggie Rooley leading us off from London. Tonight, the shocking announcement from Buckingham Palace, King Charles diagnosed with cancer. The 75-year-old monarch seen just Sunday, waving at well-wishers, attending church with his wife, Queen Camilla. This latest blow coming just days after he was released from the hospital after a procedure for an enlarged prostate. Then the queen was asked how he was recovering. How's the boss doing? Yes, yes, yes. The palace saying it was thanks to this intervention that diagnostic tests identified a form of cancer. Not detailing the specific type or stage of the disease, only that it is not prostate cancer. Before being named king at age 73, after the death of Queen Elizabeth in September 2022, Charles was Britain's longest reigning heir. King Charles has only been king for less than 18 months. He waited decades to take on that role and he was very keen to hit the ground running. And this diagnosis coming now has forced him to take a big step back from that. Royal sources say the king called his siblings and children to personally tell them the news. Prince Harry expected to fly to London to visit his father in the coming days. The king receiving an outpouring of support from world leaders, including President Biden. Glad to call him. I'm concerned about him. Just heard his diagnosis. I'll be talking about him. Charles beginning outpatient treatment today and will step back from public duties in the latest health scare for the royal family. The palace sharing the king's prostate condition on January 17th, the same day it was revealed Catherine, Princess of Wales, underwent successful abdominal surgery. Though her condition was kept private, Kensington Palace said it was not cancerous. On January 26, the king was admitted to the same hospital for his procedure and visited the princess. 
He was discharged on January 29th, a week later, the palace sharing his cancer diagnosis, saying the king feels wholly positive about his treatment and looks forward to returning to full public duty as soon as possible. And David, while the king is stepping back from public events, we do expect him to continue on with his duties as head of state. We understand this includes his weekly audiences with the prime minister. Now, we also expect Prince William to step up and take on many of his father's responsibilities. Well, he also balances this with caring for his family at home. David. People in the UK and around the world pulling for the king tonight. Maggie Ruley leading us off. Thank you. Back here in the U.S. tonight into the deadly storm slamming the West. In fact, the scope of this growing at this hour. There is breaking news coming in from Nevada. Word of an avalanche. Reports of multiple people possibly missing. And in California tonight, life-threatening flash flooding, torrential rains and mudslides. Days of rain from an atmospheric river more than 10 inches in parts of the state. Hurricane level winds from this gusts up to 100 miles an hour. Rushing water in the normally dry Los Angeles River right here. More than a month's worth of rain in just 24 hours. Mudslides in the hills around Los Angeles burying cars, damaging homes, trapping some residents inside. In Santa Rosa, a tree blown down across multiple lanes of the 101. In Ventura, a man rescued from rising waters under the 101. A ladder truck used to lift him up. Ginger Z is standing by with the forecast from California. Rob Marciano also live in Los Angeles tonight. Rob, we can see the alarming conditions uh, right there behind you. We're also following news of this avalanche in Nevada driven by this system. Yeah, David, for as much of a mess the rain has made here, it is all snow in the mountains, and that is a significant avalanche happening in Nevada, 50 miles northwest of Las Vegas in Lee Canyon outside of the ski resort. And we're just getting reports in now that everyone is accounted for. We will stay on top of that story going forward. And here in Southern California, it has been nothing short of a dramatic and clearly a destructive day. Tonight, torrents of mud and debris rushing through neighborhoods across Southern California. SUVs encased in thick mud. At least a half a dozen homes here sustained damage. Multiple people had to be rescued. So many slides in the hills around Los Angeles, but this is by far the worst. This home being pushed off its property onto this roadway, everything inside exploding out of it and sliding down this hill, including this piano. Ryan Davis and his family woken up around 2 a.m. by a terrifying sound. And it felt like a jet engine was started like right outside of our window. And then we look outside and then there's just mud and debris coming down. That atmospheric fire hose of rain and wind parked over the California coast for days, dumping more than 10 inches of rain in spots. Hasn't just been heavy rain, heavy surf has been pounding this coastline, all sorts of debris coming up through here. And look at this erosion here in Santa Barbara and these waves, they just keep on coming. Los Angeles getting more than a month's worth of rain in just 24 hours. Watch as this SUV flips over and slams into the guardrail on the five freeway. The driver was okay. Swift water rescue teams tested to their limits overnight, rescuing three people in San Bernardino County after they tried driving their SUV with a trailer through a flooded road. They were screaming for their life. It was by far the scariest moment they said that they have ever been in. And in Northern California, powerful wind gusts taking down massive trees. The driver in this car in Santa Rosa rushed to the hospital Sunday. And near Santa Cruz, one person was killed after a tree crushed this home. Here in the hills above L.A., the workers here are trying to shut off the gas. The home here, the people, they were not home, thankfully. But you can see just how frightening this force is and how unstable the ground is here. Just getting around town, uh, rock and debris all over the hills and the roadways here. Ground is unstable, and this rain just refuses to stop, David. It's going to be another long night. Rob Marciano right there in the middle of it all. Rob, thank you. Right to Ginger Z now, also in the storm zone to time this out in the 24 hours ahead. Ginger, hello to you. Hey there, David. We're at nearly 30 hours straight of rain in Los Angeles. That's really hard to do, and it is not going to stop for the next six or so. So let's look at that static atmospheric river. It has barely moved all day, and it's going to finally make its way into Orange County and San Diego by tomorrow. Let's talk about that high risk. Second day in a row for a big population like Los Angeles. That is really rare. Down to San Clemente includes San Bernardino. The landslide's still possible tonight. The flood watch is now into Arizona and Nevada. The winter storm watch is all the way to Colorado. The timing's important because we finally moved the fire hose. It's a little lighter into Southern California, Escondido, down to San Diego. Then isolated downpours will be heavy at times through Wednesday morning. 
quick look at this Los Angeles River behind me is still surreal because it's usually dry and now we've got these ferocious rapids. Our atmospheric river experts at Scripps Oceanography say this is a strong El Nino. This is what we expect. But with climate change, we can expect more extremes, extreme drought to extreme rainfall more often. David. Anyone who knows L.A., Ginger, knows that that picture is so extremely rare right behind you there. Ginger Z and Rob Marciano are thanks to both of you there tonight. To the other news, major news, in fact, from the Senate for the first time in years, Republicans and Democrats have come up with a bipartisan plan to finally address the border. The other major headline on this late today, the conservative-leaning Border Patrol Union, the officers who patrol the border, endorsing this bipartisan plan. But tonight, the House Speaker saying Republicans in the House are not interested amid pressure from Donald Trump not to agree to any solution in a presidential election year. Rachel Scott on the Hill. Tonight, Senate leaders unveiling the most sweeping border security package in decades. Republican leader Mitch McConnell reminding his party this is something they've wanted for years. And Senate Republicans have insisted, not just for months, but for years, that this urgent crisis demanded action. And now the conservative-leaning Border Patrol Union announcing it supports the deal. The $118 billion package adds $20 billion to strengthen the border, hiring new officers and Border Patrol agents. It includes a trigger mechanism. When migrant apprehensions reach 5,000 a day, the border will automatically shut down. And it makes it harder for migrants to claim asylum, expediting the process to address the backlog. It also contains $60 billion for Ukraine and $14 billion for Israel. But the bill's future now deeply uncertain. Republicans increasingly under pressure from Donald Trump to kill the bill. Trump wants to run on immigration in November and today called the deal a great gift to Democrats and a death wish for the Republican Party. Now many top Republicans who wanted a deal are doing an about face. This was House Speaker Mike Johnson in November. Uh, we want to uh, pair border security with Ukraine because I think we get bipartisan agreement on both of those matters. But today Johnson blasting the compromise he once called for, calling it a waste of time and dead on arrival. Are you killing the bill because of political consideration, sir? Will you talk? Look, look, look. look. I, I've been very clear from the very beginning about the elements that were necessary to solve the border crisis. I just don't believe that the Senate bill, as I've explained in all of our statements, meets the criteria that's necessary to solve the problem. Today, I spoke to one of the Republicans who wrote the bill, conservative Senator James Langford of Oklahoma. Is this pressure from Trump misguided? Is it helpful? The president has something he's trying to accomplish. He's trying to get elected back to be the president of the United States. I've got something I'm trying to accomplish. It's securing the nation and our, and our borders right now. So he's got his purposes right now. I've got mine. President Biden says that he would sign that bill into law immediately. It is a rare compromise between Democrats and Republicans. The Border Patrol Union insisting that it is a step in the right direction, calling it far better than the status quo, but it does face an uphill challenge in the Senate and the Speaker calling it dead on arrival in the House. David. Rachel Scott, live on the Hill. Rachel, thank you. Now to the U.S. military strikes, retaliation for the deadly drone attack, killing three U.S. troops. Tonight, President Biden now saying more is coming. So let's get right to Mary Bruce. Mary, what do you know? Well, David, the president has ordered additional retaliation, but the White House won't say when or where it will come. The goal here is to stop these relentless attacks on U.S. forces without starting and sparking a wider war with Iran. This all began with that powerful direct response against the drone strike that killed three U.S. service members in Jordan, the U.S. hitting 85 targets inside Iraq and Syria. Over the weekend, the U.S. and our partners then also launching dozens of airstrikes in Yemen, hoping to blunt attacks on vital shipping routes. And while, David, the president is confident that these attacks have been successful, that they are degrading the militants' capabilities, David, they are still launching attacks on U.S. forces. No sign they're backing down. All right, you'll keep us posted. Mary Bruce live at the White House. Thanks, Mary. Now to the major news in the trial of Michigan mother Jennifer Crumbly tonight charged in her son's deadly school attack. This evening here, the two questions the jury asked today. Trevor Alt in Michigan. Tonight, the Michigan jury deciding the fate of the first parent charged with their child's deadly school shooting sent home after seven hours of deliberations without a verdict. Six men and six women are weighing whether Jennifer Crumbly is responsible in the 2021 Oxford High School shooting. She's pleaded not guilty to four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Several jurors are parents. Several are gun owners. Today, the jury asking the judge two questions. One centered on the burden of proof needed to convict. The other about what they can infer after the shooter did not take the stand. Jennifer Crumbly's son was not called to testify in his mother's trial after his lawyer said he would take the fifth. 
Prosecutors argue Jennifer Crumbly could have prevented the tragedy had she done the smallest thing differently. The defense saying any other mother could have easily been in her shoes. And late today, the father of Justin Schilling saying he hopes the jury looks at every aspect of the case. I hope that they're taking their time and they're making sure to look at all the evidence and make sure that they make the right decision. And David, the jury will be back here at 9 a.m. tomorrow to continue weighing this landmark case. David, Trevor all again tonight. Thank you, Trevor. When we come back here, we remember a hero from 9-11. You'll remember him standing right beside President Bush at Ground Zero. And Tracy Chapman, Celine Dion, Joni Mitchell, the surprises overnight. Tonight, potential new trouble for Boeing after a supplier raised new concerns about some 737 MAX aircraft. Boeing reporting that Spirit Aerosystems told them they found two improperly drilled holes in fuselages they provide to Boeing. Tonight, Boeing says it doesn't affect planes already in service, but that adjustments may have to be made to about 50 planes still in production, potentially delaying delivery. When we come back here tonight, remembering that hero of 9-11, you'll remember him standing with President Bush at Ground Zero. Tonight, we have learned that 9-11 hero firefighter Bob Beckwith has died. He famously stood side by side with President Bush during a defining moment at Ground Zero. He was 69 back then, and Beckwith was already retired when the World Trade Center was struck. He put on his gear, joining the search for survivors. The president placing his arm around him in that iconic image, speaking to first responders three days after the attack. Tonight, former President Bush saying Beckwith's courage represented the defiant, resilient spirit of New Yorkers and Americans after 9-11. Bob Beckwith was 91. When we come back tonight, the unexpected moments, Tracy Chapman returning to the stage, Joni Mitchell performing at 80, and the moving moment, Celine Dion's surprise appearance amid her health battle. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Vivgard and Vivgard Hytrulo. Finally tonight here, it's hard to choose a favorite moment from last night's Grammys, but right at the start, seeing Tracy Chapman, hearing her voice again, that was something. The whole night was. The 66th Annual Grammy Awards, the history made and the surprises. Tracy Chapman on that stage. You got a fast car. I want to get to anywhere. Chapman and her 1988 hit, Fast Car, covered by country star Luke Combs. As a kid, it was his favorite song, saying it meant so much to him his entire life. Last night, they were side by side. You got a fast car. Is it fast enough so you can fly away? We gotta make a decision. Leave tonight or live and die this way. Chapman, so private, performing again. Miley Cyrus performing right after winning her first Grammy. I didn't want to fight, but we did. Started to cry, then remembered, I just won my first Grammy! And Joni Mitchell at 80. I've looked at clouds both sides, from both sides now. Her first performance at the Grammys ever, after a near fatal brain aneurysm, she worked to restore her voice. I really don't know clouds at all. There was Fantasia honoring Tina Turner, who we lost this past year. Billy Joel, his first new song in 30 years. Did I wait too long? And Celine Dion surprising the audience, battling a rare neurological condition. She walked onto that stage. When I say that um, I'm happy to be here, I really mean it from my heart. There to present Album of the Year. Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift making history, winning Album of the Year for a record fourth time. All I want to do is keep doing this. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do what I love so much. Mind blown. Thank you so much.
Taylor Swift making history last night and seeing so many legends last night who paved the way, really, for the musicians of today. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.